Welcome to St John's. As the rector of the parish, it's a great joy to welcome Bad Blake School for this celebration in words and music of the great mystery and feast of Christmas. St John's Church and Bad Blake School have a long relationship. It goes back many years. And over those years, uh, there will have been many ups and downs in the life of the school, of the church, and indeed of our whole city. And this Christmas, uh, will feel perhaps rather different from previous Christmases. It will perhaps feel rather more down than up, just as much of this year has felt uh, rather down rather than up. But the great mystery that we celebrate in this uh, gathering when we hear in word and song the story of Christmas is one of great hope in the midst of the challenges and the uncertainties and the fears of this current time. Because at the heart of the Christmas mystery is that God came among us to share our lives, that in turn we might share his life in the joy and the glory of heaven. And that is a faith that has sustained men and women in many places and through many generations through all sorts of challenges and through a great deal of turmoil. It's a faith that has given great cause for celebration and has been something that has sustained people when times have been tough. And this year, as we celebrate Christmas in tough times and with uncertainty around us, I pray that we will all be sustained by the knowledge of God being with us, that we may never be separated from him, that we may never, as St. Paul puts it, be separated from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. However we celebrate Christmas this year and however restrained our celebrations may have to be, may we never lose sight of the hope and the joy that is ours because God came to share our life that we might never face anything alone. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, by your incarnation, you gathered into one things earthly and heavenly. Fill us all with peace and goodwill. Help us to know the joy of the Christ child and the perseverance of the wise men and the eagerness of the shepherds. And help us to know that as your son is with us now, so we may be with him and with you through all eternity. And this we ask in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen.
was the night before Christmas, and all through the flat, not a creature was stirring, not even a rat. The lights had gone off on the silent TV. We had seen Back to the Future and Jaws 23. I'd had three pepperami and a litre of Fanta, and now I was ready and waiting for Santa. I knew he was coming, I knew I was right, for Mummy and Daddy had kissed me goodnight. And Mum had, had said, that noise, I heard it again, dear. To which Dad replied, no, it's only the rain, dear. I tried to ignore my digestion's loud rattle, for three pepperami put up quite a battle. And that's when I heard them, the sleigh bells a-jingling, the shouted instructions that set my scalp tingling. Come, Rudolph, come, Seely, come, Spencer, keep prancing, come, Skilton and Press, come, Brucey, keep, come dancing, come, Harris and Tumba, Rev Slavic, don't slap, Mr. Kelsey, keep up at the back. I heard their hooves clatter and scrabble for grip, for our roof is quite steep and it's easy to slip. I heard Santa alight and I heard my heart beating, for then I remembered we have central heating. The flu pipe is tiny, he hasn't a hope, but surely he's magic, of course he can cope. He'll squeeze down the chimney, he has, that's the noise of a very small man with a sack of small toys. He's got to the boiler. I heard a small cough. Poor Santa. I hope that the gas has turned off. Go back, Santa Claus. It's not too late to jump. Oh no, I can hear him. He's caught in the pump. He's off on the circuit, through all the rads, the hall, then some ba Sam's bedroom, and then Mum and Dad's. He's going through mine now. I heard a small clank. It's a tower row next, and then the hot water tank. Then back to the boiler, now gasping for breath. He couldn't have survived. What a horrible death. Hush, listen. Exactly, there isn't a sound. Poor Father Christmas has definitely drowned. How shocking, no stockings, no gifts anymore. No presents for me or for Kevin next door. The kids of the world will be simply appalled and blame us for having the heating installed. My brain in a fury, I had a small weep and pale and confused, must have fallen asleep. I woke to the sound of a pipe's early knocking, remembered the horrors, then noticed my stocking, the varicose sides and the end of Tochuma, that speaks of the Rolos, the Twix, the Satsuma. I cried, Santa lives, it was only a dream, the heating chair too, with a small hiss of steam. What a nightmare, but my fault, I must have been balmy, last thing at night to eat free pepperami.
So here it is, Merry Christmas. Everybody's having fun. Look to the future now, it's only just begun. So slang slayed all those years ago, and usually in every shop in England, if they weren't all closed. But here's the nub, the real clue to the future. Mary listened to angels and found things born in her. Travelled to great distances and found things given to her. Joseph listened to dreams and found reality. The shepherds left their work and found their joy. And wise men abandoned the wisdom, charts, maps, compasses and guidebooks that they had already possessed to follow a new star that was rising before them. In order to listen, in order to dream, in order to smile with joy, and in order to travel vast distances, in order to learn new ways and trust new leaders, you first need to stop, to take stock of what you really want from life and where you will really find the direction, affirmation and purposes you seek. It is the longest journey you will ever make. It requires a complete or reorientation. It is also the shortest. Its beginning and end can be found in the stable at Bethlehem, away in a manger. So may I wish you a defragged and rebooted Christmas this year. Things back in the right order, first things first. And with it, the joy and peace that is in the heart of the Christmas story.
Christmas by John Betjeman. The bells of waiting Advent ring. The tortoise stove is lit again. And lamp oil light across the night has caught the streaks of winter rain in many a stained glass window sheen from Crimson Lake to Hooker's Green. The holly in the windy hedge and around the manor house, the yew, will soon be stripped to deck the ledge, the altar, font and arch and pew, so that villagers can say, the church looks nice on Christmas Day. Provincial public houses blaze, corporation tramcars clang on lighted tenements I gaze where paper decorations hang. And bunting in the red town hall says Merry Christmas to you all. And London shops on Christmas Eve are strung with silver bells and flowers as hurrying clerks the city leave to pigeon-haunted classic towers and marble clouds go scudding by the many-steepled London sky. And girls in slacks remember dad and oafish louts remember mum. And sleepless children's hearts are glad and Christmas morning bells say come even to the shining ones who dwell safe in the Dorchester Hotel. And is it true, this most tremendous tale of all, seen in a stained glass window's hue, a baby in an ox's stall, the maker of the stars and sea, become a child on earth for me? And is it true, for if it is, no loving fingers tying strings around those tissued fripperies. The sweet and silly Christmas things, bath salts and inexpensive scent and hideous tie so kindly meant. No love that in a family dwells, no caroling in frosty air, nor all the steeple shaking bells can with this simple truth compare that God was man in Palestine and lives today in bread and wine. Some chaps get the fat and some chaps get the lean when they start on their journey through life. Some make pots of money by being MPs and some gets it by taking a wife. Some learns a good trade such as a dustman or sweep, which the same I'd have done if I'd known. But the special profession I've drifted to now is minding the hole in the road. As a rule, it's a nice quiet job but there's times where I've hated the work. For instance, I once had to go Christmas Day on a job which I tried hard to shirk. I minded that hole, sir, the whole blessed day, 
till my dinner and tea time had gone. For my Christmas dinner, if any was left, I should have had when relieved later on. At home with some friends, with a big goose, I'd ordered half a ton of coal. Yet here I'm sitting at 7 p.m. and shivering in front of me hole. I thought of them making all merry at home, stuffed with goose from their heads to their toes, just about to leave me a cut of the beak or the end of the parson's nose. And I sat quite despondent, dozed half asleep. I was feeling quite humpy and sore, when from one of the big houses just to my right, a swell flunky stepped out through the door. He came straight to me and said with a bow, which made his gold lace gleam and shine, the Countess's compliments, as you're alone, should be pleased if you'd step in and dine. Well, I, I very near dropped to the ground with surprise, for it wasn't the safe thing to do. What if thieves came in and pinched a great heap of them stones? Or if hopped off with a drainpipe or two? And I thought of the Countess's kindness of heart, how she'd thought of me lonely outside. So I scraped off the clay with a spade and followed the flunky inside. And there sat the Countess, all merry and bright, with diamonds and jewels all aglow in a silk dress which must have cost nigh 20 pounds, though there wasn't much of it, you know. And her husband, the Viscount, was sat there at her side while the waiters flew around with a whiz, and in half a jiff, I was seated with them, eating and shifting a fizz. The Viscount, he drank to my jolly good health as he took from his wine glass a pull I just nodded. I couldn't say much, for my mouth, like my heart, was too full. When we'd finished us gents, all put a cigar, and the perfume was sublime. By the bands that was on them, why, I'll guarantee they must have cost fourpence a time. Then the ladies, they start playing Kiss in the Ring. The Countess enjoyed the game too. And when she gets in the ring, she turns straight to me and says, Mr. Nobbs, I'll have you. Oh, I didn't know which was my head or my heels. It was like being in fairyland. I threw my smoke and wiped my moustache like this with the back of my hand. She put up her lips looking sweet and saucy. And I blushed as towards her I stole. I bent forward and then I woke up just in time. Or I might have felt clean down the hole. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright round yon virgin mother and child. Holy infant, so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly At the crib of Jesus, all are welcome, and that is what the wise men tell us. 
Over the centuries, they have come increasingly to represent everybody. Artists begin to paint the wise men to represent different races, Western, Arab and Black. They portray them as men at different stages of their lives, a youth, a man in his prime and an old man. They are all of us called from all over the world to witness the birth of the new strange king and to be changed by it. Jesus as God is not just the possession of people who already know him or of people who are already pure in heart. He draws around the cradle of his new kingdom all kinds of people with all kinds of talents. The only thing they all have in common is that when they see the baby, they know that they have seen someone who will change their lives. Perhaps the wise men and the shepherds spent the rest of their lives telling the story of the great event. Perhaps every time they told it, they saw more and more how all of their lives had prepared them to recognise this baby when they saw him. But the wise men in particular are there to tell us that the same will be true of all of us. Whatever our lives have been up until now, as we look at the baby lying in the straw, we can see in him the loving activity of God. We can look back over the whole of our lives and know everything, even the things that we are the most ashamed of, even the things that we know have been wrong, have been preparing us to see this baby and know him and accept his gift of life. Welcome, all wonders in one sight. Eternity shut in a span. Summer in winter, day in night. Heaven in earth and God in man. Great little one, whose all-embracing birth brings earth to heaven stoops heaven to earth. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The hatred which divides nation from nation, race from race, class from class. Father, forgive. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Lord, teach us to make peace with all that surrounds us. May we reflect on the meaning and shape of our universe and nurture it with prayer. May the entire creation move forward in solidarity, oneness of spirit and purpose, and together shape and inherit a legacy worthy of God and man, where peace is not a dream but our true destiny. The curvaceous desires of people and nations to possess what is not their own. Father, forgive. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Muslim prayer. O oh Allah, guide us in the path of peace. Your forgiveness is vaster than my sins, and your compassion is more promising than my actions. O oh Allah, make me patient and grateful to you, and make me look small in my own eyes, and great in the sight of others. Amen. The greed that exploits the work of human hands and lays waste the earth. Father, forgive our envy of the welfare and the happiness of others. Father, forgive. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. Oh Lord, hear my prayer.
A Buddhist prayer. As a blind man might find a jewel in a heap of rubbish, so too this awakening mind has somehow appeared in me. This is the elixir of life, born to end death in the world. This is the inexhaustible treasure alleviating poverty in the world. This is the supreme medicine curing the sickness of the world, a tree of shelter for weary creatures staggering along the road of existence. Today, I summon the world to Buddhahood and to worldly happiness meanwhile. In the presence of all the saviors, may gods, titans, and all rejoice. Our indifference to the plight of the imprisoned, the homeless, the refugee, Father, forgive. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Come and listen to me. A Hindu prayer. Oh God, Lead us from darkness to light. May all beneficent beings bring peace to us. And may all things be a source of peace to us. And may thy peace itself bestow peace on all. And may that peace come to me also. Santi, Santi, Santi unto all. The lust which dishonours the bodies of men, women and children. Father, forgive. The pride which leads us to trust in ourselves and not in God. Father, forgive. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. A Jewish prayer. Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, that we may walk the paths of the Most High, and we shall beat our swords into plowshares, and our spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. Be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another as Christ forgave you. Amen. Oh Lord, hear my prayer, oh Lord, hear my prayer, when I call, answer me, oh Lord, hear my prayer, oh Lord, hear my prayer, come and listen to me. A Christian prayer. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours forever and ever. Amen. He's grown, that baby. Not that most people have noticed. He still looks the same, lying there in the straw, with animals and shepherds looking on. He's safe there, locked in that moment, where time met eternity. Reality, of course, is different. He grew up, astonished people with his insight, disturbed them with ideas that stretched into new maturity. Some found him much too difficult to cope with, nailed him down to fit their narrow minds. We are more subtle, keep him helpless, 
refuse to let him be the man he is. Adore him, the Christmas baby, eternally unable to grow up until we set him free. By all means, let us pause there at the stable and miracle at the marvel of birth. But we'll never get to know God with us until we learn to find him at the inn, a fellow guest who shares the joy and sorrow, the host who is the life we celebrate. He's grown, that baby.
Let us pray. God, our Redeemer, who prepared the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of your Son, grant that as she looked for his coming as our Savior, so we may be ready to greet him when he comes again to be our judge, who is alive and reigns with you in a unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.